Grab your tablet or grab your wallet because you might want to buy a tablet after I tell you these 12 ways to use a tablet with podcasting. Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 210. Thank you for joining me for the Audacity to Podcast. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, and this is the award-winning how-to podcast about podcasting. It's where I give you the guts and teach you the tools to launch or improve your own podcast for sharing your passions and finding success. Tablets are really great devices, and several years ago when they first launched, or it became more popular, that is, the iPad was not the first tablet. There have been other tablets before. Apple just really innovated in the space and made the tablets, I think, a lot better by how they inspired their competitors and such. And now Android tablets have really matured nicely. Windows Surface tablets, I'm hearing really great things about like the Surface Pro 3 and newer tablets. So the tablet space is here to stay and a lot of people are really embracing tablet computing. Many years ago when the tablets were just first coming out, the main thing that people would use them for was really media consumption and gaming. It would be to watch videos, to read articles, read books, listen to podcasts, that kind of thing, and play games, Angry Birds, and other things like that. But now the tablet experience has matured a lot more so that it's no longer just consumption, but now you can lean to the side of creation and make things with your tablet. It's entirely possible to podcast entirely from an iPad or an Android device. But that's not what I'm going to talk about in this. I'm going to talk about how you could use a tablet you may already have, or maybe you're considering getting, along with what you're already doing in your podcast. And I have 12 ways to tell you about that. I'm going to tell you these 12 ways and recommend a bunch of apps and resources to go along with these 12 different ways to use a tablet with your podcasting. This is not going to be an exhaustive list in the podcast. I really recommend that you check out the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash tablet for podcasting. That's F-O-R, tablet for podcasting to see the show notes because as people comment on the show notes, and I want your comments there with your extra recommendations. So as you and other people comment on the show notes, I'll be adding those to the show notes so we can have an exhaustive list there in the show notes. So I may not mention a particular app here in the podcast episode. Go check the show notes because you might find something that you're looking for there and might be able to contribute something there in the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash tablet for podcasting. And that's the show notes for episode 210. So here are the 12 ways to use a tablet with podcasting, along with how many other podcasters are using tablets with their podcasting. Number one, soundboard. This is the number one way that I see and have heard from podcasters who are using a tablet with podcasting. It is a great use. There are many soundboard apps that you can use on your computer where you're playing a sound effect into your recording or into your live stream. This could be your intro or outro music. It could be some kind of bumpers. It could be a voicemail. It could be some other just crazy sound effect that you use in your podcasting. Whatever it is, what it does is it plays it then into your mixer or directly into your recorder, depending on how you have things set up. And it saves you that time of having to go back and edit that in later. Depending on how you do your recording, you may even have more flexibility in how you can shift your soundtrack recording, but that's beside the point. Here, you can use your tablet for that, and the awesome thing about that is the accessibility then that your tablet could be running this one program at a time, and the entire screen of your tablet is dedicated to the soundboard. So you just reach over and tap the sound clip that you want to play. Or you can do advanced things with other programs out there to be able to adjust the playback volume of a clip or fade it in, fade it out while you're playing it, anything like that. So that it's really easy and it's not bogging down your own computer, especially if you're using your computer to handle something like live streaming 
or handling your Skype or Google Hangouts call or whatever kind of voiceover internet protocol or VoIP that you're using, it can get really complicated when you try to play your sound clips from the same device that's also handling the recording, streaming, or VoIP. That's hard. It's possible, but it's hard. In short, the way that you do it is you have to add multiple sound cards to the device, multiple audio devices, that is. But that's where a tablet can come in really handy. Just plug that into your mixer, potentially directly into your computer, depending on how you have things set up. And you can then play the sound from your tablet into your recording and you manage all those sounds on your tablet. I received a lot of feedback about this when I emailed my email list and asked them, how do you use a tablet for podcasting if you use a tablet? And several suggestions came in, like Barry Kessler from the Southern California Real Estate Answer Man podcast said that he uses an iPad and Soundbite. Max Flight from Airplane Geeks said that he uses Boss Jock, and then he also mounts his iPad onto a mic stand. And I've got some of the links to these resources in the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash tablet for podcasting. But Max uses it also to play sound clips, but he's using the Boss Jock app. Dwayne Stroud from Survivor Talk with D&D and Shooting the Breeze with D&D also said that he uses an iPad with Boss Jock. Dave Jackson from School of Podcasting does a live show called Ask the Podcast Coach that he does on Saturday mornings at 1030 Eastern Time over at askthepodcastcoach.com slash live. And he uses Soundbite on his iPad Air in order to play the intro and outro music as well as his other bumpers because he has certain bumpers that he plays during the live show. And you definitely want to be able to play your sounds during a live show to make it so much more part of the experience for your audience. And Tom Stewart said that he uses a Samsung Galaxy tab and he's on the more professional side of things. He's a former radio broadcaster and he uses an app called Wall of Carts that is essentially the same thing. It's a live soundboard for people to use. And Mike Dakik said that he uses an iPad and the Soundbite app as well as his soundboard of choice for his podcast in the news with Mike Dakuk. So this is the most popular way to do it. And it's really easy too. All you really need to connect your iPad to a mixer is a standard stereo one eighth inch, or it would also be called a 3.5 millimeter plug that goes into the iPad. And then the other side is a split RCA. You can do this in slightly different ways and use slightly different adapters. There are different cables as well that might just split it out to quarter inch for you that for your particular mixer may work best. Maybe you bring it into the RCA inputs of your mixer. And so that's all you need. Or maybe you just use an RCA cable that you bought from Walmart for just a few dollars. And then you use RCA to quarter inch adapters so you can plug the iPad into your mixer. Whatever the case is, this is very easy because all you're doing is playing the sounds from the iPad or any kind of tablet you're using. You're not sending sound back to the tablet. So just a straight audio cable, as if it's a pair of headphones, is all that you need. You plug that into the tablet, connect that to your mixer into a particular channel where you can control the volume if you want to. And then you just play the sound effects and it goes into your mixer. And if you have a mix minus setup on your computer, you don't have to worry really about complicating things. You just make sure that whatever channel your audio is coming in from your tablet is also sent out to the person on Skype. There are many ways that you can incorporate this, but that's generally the easier way. And it makes it really simple then to play those sounds into your your recording. So some of the apps that we just mentioned here that I recommend, and these are really my top recommendations for a soundboard app for your tablet. These are primarily iPad based. The Android side isn't quite as developed, but please comment in the show notes at the audacity to podcast.com slash tablet for podcasting to recommend an Android app for this. In general, I recommend iPad for a tablet, so that's why you're going to see a very heavy iPad leaning. But get what you know and what you're most comfortable with. And I recommend an iPad. 
First, Boss Jock. You've heard it mentioned a couple times here. Great app. It can handle several different things for you, but one of the simple things that you can use it for is managing your soundboard. You can upload clips through Dropbox or from iTunes on your computer, transfer them manually into these different buttons, and then you have those buttons that you can tap on the iPad or even an iPhone or iPod Touch. Many of these iOS and Android apps that I'll be mentioning are universal apps that will work on multiple sizes of devices. So a lot of what I'm telling you doesn't only have to be a tablet. It could also be a smartphone. The app that I really like is Soundboard for iPad by Ambrosia Software. It's very beautifully designed and it can synchronize with desktop Soundboard for OS X and carry over all of my sound clips from there into the iPad version, as well as transferring through other means like through iTunes and such. It hasn't been updated in a while, but Ambrosia Software is still in business, and they do say that updates are coming. The third app is SoundBite from Black Cat Systems. This, in my opinion, wins the award for best-looking Windows 95 app. Yeah, it's that ugly. But it's functional. And a lot of people swear by this and say that it works beautifully for them. So check it out, SoundBite. That works on iOS devices, and there are desktop versions of that as well. But I have these links in the show notes for episode 210. So this is number one, using your tablet as a soundboard. Check out the feedback from each of these people I mentioned and how they explain that they use these different apps within their actual workflow. And also the links to each of their podcasts are in the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash tablet for podcasting. That's number one, soundboard. Number two, recording. Yeah, you could use your tablet or really any mobile device as your recording device for your audio or video podcast. Looking at this from the perspective of the tablet, Leroy Otterson from the Geeks Amok podcast said that he uses a Surface Pro 3, and that is basically a Windows machine as a tablet, and it allows you to then install Windows apps like Audacity, and that's what Leroy uses is Audacity on his computer. So he's recording into the Surface, and he loves that the Surface is, he said it's the lightest weight tablet that he's used and he has a bluetooth keyboard along with it so it makes it easy for him to take notes he can use his mouse and manage the website and emails on this touch screen device that he has but being able then to record directly into audacity is great and it's there in his tablet you could look at this from multiple aspects depending on your particular workflow with podcasting Boss Jock, like I mentioned earlier, is a great soundboard app, but it's also a great recording app. Boss Jock was created to be an entire podcast production app with no editing required. You may want to edit your shows, in which case Boss Jock may not be the best choice for you. But what it does allow you to do is you can handle your recording, your automatic ducking, that's where your voice stays at the same level, but your background music goes down or goes up. You can handle all of these things while you're recording into the app. So you press the button and you hear a sound clip play, but that sound clip is also recorded into your recording that's made with Boss Jock. It's a great app. Uh, The guys there are incredible guys. I've interviewed them before in a video edition of the Audacity to Podcast, and they've made an incredible product that continues to improve, works really well And it's just great for recording or some of these other things. But there are many other great recording apps as well, like Rode, the company that makes many microphones and audio accessories, has an app called Rode Rec. There's a free version and a premium version. I like the premium version because it has Dropbox integration where I can save a recording directly into Dropbox. But the free version also works well. It's a basic audio recorder with even a little bit of editing in it. But this would be the app I would recommend if you want to do something like plug in a Rode Smart Lav Plus or some other kind of lavalier that you have plugged into your iPhone through a TRRS splitter and you want to use your iPhone as your audio recorder instead of buying a separate digital recorder. The Rode Rec app works great for recording. If you're doing video, you could use the built-in video camera app for your device and those built-in camera apps are getting better and better 
But some notable apps to consider would be ProCam, Camera Plus, and the one I really recommend, especially for iOS, is Filmic Pro. These are special camera apps that allow you to have a lot more control over things with your camera, like the white balance or the exposure, the focus lock, and things like that, that the built-in camera just might not have because these are advanced features that really a video producer would need, not just the average person who wants to pull out their phone and take video. And please, public service announcement here. Stop vertical video. I need a t-shirt that says that. Turn that phone on its side and record the video that way. Other great apps you can use are Aphonic, Opinion, and Reiner. These are on different platforms. Aphonic does use the Aphonic web service, but you don't have to use Aphonic, the web service, for actually editing your files. You could use that just to upload the file from your mobile device and then you download it, edit it somewhere else, or you could work with the Aphonic software. It is great online software. Opinion is a new app in the space designed for podcasters to be able to record from their mobile devices and edit the podcast. So it takes a different approach. One of the really innovative things is that they decided instead of doing the traditional thing where you have the audio timeline is from left to right, they decided to make it from top to bottom. And their touch integration with being able to edit your show is really cool. So you could do your recording and your editing there in Opinion. Reiner is a different type of app, but it can be used for recording. And there will be other apps similar to this, like PodClear and Cast, eventually entering the space. But Reiner is the first one here. And currently, they're only on iOS, and they'll have an Android version at some point. But Reiner handles what we call double-ender recordings, where... I'm recording on my side, you're recording on your side, and we're having a conversation together. And then in post-processing, we piece these separate recordings together for the highest quality. This is better quality than my recording your voice after you've come through Skype and been compressed through Skype or Google Plus Hangouts or any kind of app like that. So Ringer handles both the call and the recording, but it records on the local device instead of through the internet or a web service or something like that, and it shares the recording then with you afterward. So it's a great way to do high-quality double-ender conversations without the complications of a lot of hardware and software and trying to tell people how to use Audacity or something like that. This could be great because they just use their iOS device, eventually an Android device, and they can talk into that. And you'll often get better quality that way than any other way, especially if your guest might be tempted to use the internal microphone on their computer and they stay two to three feet away from that microphone. You'll get a lot of room noise. But if you help them to use the Rainer app instead, just tell them, hold this up close to your mouth, maybe six inches away from your mouth. Just hold it there. Try not to move your hand across that a whole lot or use your headset that comes with your device and talk through that microphone. That'll sound a lot better and have a lot less room noise. Please comment on the show notes over at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash tablet for podcasting on other recommendations that you have for recording either audio or video podcasts directly into your tablet. It can be a great way to keep your podcasting simple and mobile. There are other devices that can integrate with some of this by many different companies out there like iRig has different devices or different companies will make things where you plug your iPad into it. But we're looking at primarily just the tablet plus an app for our solution here. So that's number two, recording. Number three, curating content. This is something that Raphael Ruz from Crusaders Radio, which is produced by Dark Mind Radio, pointed out is that they have Android tablets for all of their podcast hosts. And their podcast hosts use the Feedly app to read their favorite RSS feeds. And all that they have to do to collaborate together on their show notes is they each tag the particular news items that they find from Feedly. So they're reading content, they tag it into Pocket. And then they just open up their Pocket program which helps collect information that you've tagged. And it used to be called other things, but basically it was something that you wanted to read later. So you use Pocket then 
as the basis for your show notes and how your show will progress just looking through these news feed items. This is a great suggestion. It's a couple items that you can use different programs that work in the process. And I do recommend Feedly. It's cross-platform. It works as a web app as well. It's on pretty much everything out there. It's a great RSS reader. I was using Feedly before Feedly was cool and before Google Reader shut down. But Feedly allows you to check your RSS feeds of whatever subscriptions that you have. And you can tag them. You can share them with other services and such. Pocket allows you to read these things later or remember these bookmarks. Some other apps that you might want to consider would be Delicious, a bookmarking tool or pen board, very similar. Mr. Reader is my favorite app on iPad for reading RSS feeds. Reader and Feeder and other apps out there can be great as well on multiple platforms for reading these RSS feeds. I actually find that I enjoy reading RSS feeds more from my tablet than on my computer. Because on my computer, I'm sitting at my desk looking at a monitor, but my tablet, I can lean back in a chair, I can hold it like a book, I can set it down on the table and look down at it. My tablet makes things a lot easier for reading content, which can give me ideas for preparing a podcast episode or just content that I want to curate, like if you have a news style podcast where you're addressing the latest news. So this is number three, curating content. Number four, preparing notes. This is what I do a lot with my own podcast and several other podcasters will do this. Rod Thomas from It's Not As You Perceive podcast as well as the Messianic Torah Observer podcast uses a Kindle Fire tablet and the Evernote app on it. And the awesome thing about Evernote, and it is awesome, is that it is basically everywhere on every kind of device out there. You can use it as a web app or a desktop app, a mobile app, a tablet app, and it synchronizes between all of these places. Evernote's a great place to draft your show notes and start processing ideas for your show. You can collaborate with other people, or this can be a solo thing where you are taking your notes into this Evernote app And you can take these notes from anywhere. You might be surprised where you get inspiration. And when you get inspiration, don't think, oh yeah, I'll remember that. Put it somewhere where you actually will remember it. And Evernote is an app that I love for that. And if you have a tablet, definitely get a Bluetooth keyboard to go along with it. There are many different ones depending on your particular style, but that makes it a lot easier for typing into a tablet app like Evernote or something else. Some other great apps that you could use with preparing notes for your podcast would be Google Documents with that nice real-time collaboration feature. Workflowy is what I use with my Once Upon a Time podcast. We all use Workflowy, and it works great because we each have our own sub-bullet points, and we add our observations to the Once Upon a Time TV show under our own sub-bullet points. I also use Workflowy when taking notes on product training materials where I have this really big outline for the product tutorial or thing that I'm doing, like with my SEO for podcasters course, really big outline. And it wouldn't work to scroll through this in a Google document or Evernote or something. It could get a little hard to manage. I used Workflowy for that. And that made it very accessible as well. And you can use Workflowy like a to-do list, or you can just use it as an outline tool. Don't forget the WordPress app as well, especially if you use WordPress on your website. You could create your show notes in the WordPress app, save them as a draft. You'll have access to them on the web or vice versa. And then you can use those notes to develop your ideas. And that's one fewer steps that you have to take to get your show notes from whatever tool you use to the web. Your show notes are already there in WordPress. So you could get to the point where all you have to do is record attach your episode and click publish and your show notes are already there and you don't have to worry about formatting and pasting from another program or multiple versions or anything like that. If you're on an iOS device, Drafts is a beautiful program. I've heard people praise it for a while. I finally got it last year when it went on sale and I really like it. For one reason, I've become a fan of writing in Markdown, which is a different style of formatting your text without having to worry about keyboard shortcuts or a toolbar or anything like that. For example, if you surround text with underscores, 
that will italicize the text. That kind of thing where you're typing your formatting, but your hands don't have to leave the keyboard or have to worry about certain key combinations usually in order to type this formatting into your notes. Drafts is a great program that can work with that as well as integrate with many other programs out there. Evernote is just one of many of those programs that can integrate with and share your notes from there into another app. I've written a lot of things in drafts and it's a great tool and it has a lot of power beyond what I'm doing with it. It's a great app for preparing notes. Another app that I've discovered just recently at the recommendation of someone from Podcasters Roundtable is Hackpad. It's available as a web app and it's designed for people who want to collaborate on notes for some kind of presentation or something and they do specifically mention podcasters and it can work great as well for collecting your information, preparing your notes to present for your podcast. I'd love to hear from you your suggestions of other apps you use for taking notes and preparing your notes for your podcast. Of course, the built-in notes app can work, but something else too would be great. Please comment on the show notes for episode 210 at com slash tablet for podcasting. That's number four, preparing notes. Number five is really an extension of this, and that is presenting your podcast. You could use any of these previously mentioned note-taking apps for presenting the information in your podcast. I do this with our Clean Comedy podcast previously before we have decided to make the switch to video. But what we would do in the audio is I would take the notes, put the feedback, put some of my reminders for funny stories directly into a WordPress post. And then I would use the WordPress app on my iPad to read the notes or see them for presenting in the actual podcast. And it was nice because the iPad was very small, discreet, and I could set it down in front of me when we were live streaming the video recording. People couldn't see the iPad, but I could see it. It was small enough, but it was also close enough that I could read the notes from it to know what's coming next in the podcast. So everything that I mentioned for apps that you can use for taking notes and preparing your notes for your podcast, you could potentially use for presenting in your podcast as well. But you could use other apps such as Evernote's presentation mode, or you could use Keynote, or you could use some kind of document app that allows you to zoom in very easily. Workflowy is really great for this because, as I mentioned earlier, the ability to zoom in on a particular point can be really helpful. So if you have a podcast that regularly has three segments and each of those segments you have a lot of subpoints under each of them maybe segment number 1 is your introduction to the topic your first topic as well section 2 is feedback and section 3 is a completely new topic instead of having to scroll through and seeing all three sections you could just tap on section 1 and you're zoomed in to just that section and you use that on your tablet or you could use a browser on a computer And then you are presenting from that outline instead of seeing your entire outline. I'd love to hear your thoughts on apps you can use while you're presenting the information in your podcast. Please comment on the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash tablet for podcasting. Number six. Now this is getting into items where no one suggested some of these things. So these items might make your head explode. They might open your mind to new ideas. And I really want to challenge you to think outside the box with how to use these other devices with your podcasting. Number six, guest or co-host call in. There are many podcasts that like to record with remote guests or co-hosts connecting regularly. And there are many different ways of doing this. A popular way that you've probably seen on This Week in Tech is to get multiple Mac minis and connect them together on a mixer. You get this thing they've previously called a Skyposaurus. You're using Skype. Each computer has its own Skype ID. Todd Cochran also does this with his Geek News Central podcasts and new media show and such. But it gets really complicated and gets really expensive and also takes a lot of power too. But you could use your mobile device or your tablet as that extra computer for handling Skype Google Hangouts, a phone call, anything like that. 
it's really easy to connect this to your mixer. It's not as easy as just using the tablet as a soundboard. You just need a slightly different cable and to plug things in a little bit differently. I previously called this cable an iPod AV cable, but now with the direction of iPods going, you search for that and you have to really scroll through a lot of pages to find the right cable. Now, the better recommendation for this is just, it would be called a TRRS to RCA cable. That is tip ring ring sleeve. If you look at a regular pair of headphones and look at the plug-in, whether that be a quarter inch, 3.5 millimeter, which is also sometimes called eighth inch, look at that connector and you'll notice that it has two black stripes on it or it has three metal sections, a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. A TRRS would add an extra black stripe or an extra ring around it. This is what you might have received on a pair of headphones and microphone that came with your mobile device, like the Apple EarPods or something similar. You'll see the extra stripe and extra ring to it, and that's to account for the microphone in the pair of headphones. You can use a TRRS to RCA cable or a pair of adapters and some cables in order to properly split the signal from an iPad or an Android tablet or really potentially any mobile device so that you can plug it into your mixer with Mix Minus. The way this would generally work is that the audio coming from the device is coming through the red and white plugs of the TRRS opposite end of the cable. If you're working with RCA, you'll probably see yellow, white, and red plugs. So the audio coming out of that device is on the red and white, and red is the right side and white is the left side, but that might not matter to you if you're just getting voice coming through. Then that third plug, which would typically be colored yellow, is the voice that's sent back to that device. So it's that yellow plug that you'd want to plug into your mixer's FX out or auxiliary out, the thing that you would be using for your mix minus, basically. That's where you connect that with the yellow plug. So you, then you have one cable that plugs into your mixer through three different places, the yellow, the white, and the red. And then you plug that one cable into your iOS device and you have a Mix Minus setup there with your mobile device, iOS, Android, whatever kind of tablet or mobile device. And you can use that then for Skype calls, for Google Plus Hangout calls. You could even use that for phone calls. You're connecting a phone number to your mixer by connecting your phone to a mixer. I have heard of some people even adapting this to 2.5 millimeter, the standard headphone plugs would be 3.5 millimeter, but then 2.5 millimeter is even smaller. And sometimes they can adapt this to that kind of plug for their home landline connection to connect it to a mixer. Very similar setups. The exact color coding may be a little bit different if you're using a different device. For example, the microphone in that connects to the auxiliary out or FX out of your mixer might be red or white for your device instead of yellow. That's where you really need to experiment to find out what is best here. But to do this, you just need a TRRS to RCA cable. If you search Amazon or just look at the show notes for this episode at the audacity to podcast.com slash tablet for podcasting, you'll see a link to a particular TRRS cable that you could use these TRRS cables don't always work on the new Macs, though. If you're thinking, oh, I could get this and it'll work fine on my Mac or my MacBook, my Retina iMac or something like that, where it has just a single audio port, it doesn't always work due to really weird things with the way the Mac works with the new audio ports. That's a separate recommendation that I'll cover someday in a video once I finish testing some things. But then you use that mobile device as your call-in device. It could be you give out a phone number that forwards to that device and people can call your show live and you're just using your mobile device to handle that call or they Skype in or you connect with a Google Hangouts that way. 
whatever it is, that can be a great way then to integrate with the rest of your recording instead of having to buy an extra computer, which could be an extra few hundred dollars when you might already have a tablet that can do the same job. That's number six, guest or co-host call-in. Number seven, live streaming. You could use your tablet to handle the live streaming for you instead of your desktop computer. I do this very regularly where I run the Mixler app on my iPhone or I could run it on my iPad as well and use that feed coming from the mixer instead of running the desktop Mixler app because I try to reduce how many apps I'm running on my desktop computer so that I'm not making the CPU run hot and thus making the fan louder on the computer. But you could then use the other mobile apps like Spreaker or Mixler in order to handle the live stream through those devices. It doesn't have to be audio only, though. You could use those mobile devices as your Google Plus Hangouts device or your Skype device if you're going to be a guest on someone else's show. I've done this before with Podcasters Roundtable, where for a little while I was without a computer and I was borrowing my wife's computer, but I'd promised her to let her have it on this particular evening, and Raritega and I were going to do this live call with Podcasters Roundtable, and it worked out really well because the topic was basically what happens when everything goes wrong, and it did seem like everything went wrong on that evening. But what I did from my video was I used the camera on the, I think I used the iPad at that time, I plugged in that TRRS adapter into the iPad so I could talk through my regular mixer and microphone, but I was talking into the mobile device, and then that handled the live streaming out to Google Plus Hangouts, and then Ray could then stream that and embed that elsewhere. You could also use your mobile device as an extra camera with your live streaming. Wirecast now for Windows and OS X has this awesome feature that lets you tap into your mobile device as an additional video source. So you could switch to it, not just showing what's on the mobile device, but using your mobile device as a camera for live streaming to the internet. That's brilliant. And that's with Wirecast, which is expensive software, starts at about $500, but it could be brilliant for whatever you need to do instead of buying thousands of dollars in equipment, you buy a few hundred dollars in software and integrate with the equipment you already have. That's number seven, live streaming. Number eight, live engagement. If you have any kind of live stream for your podcast, then I recommend that you also have a way that your audience can engage with you while you're recording, like a chat room or may it be an official hashtag that they're supposed to use. And a tablet can work great for engaging with this live conversation going on during your live show, and it can be in different ways. For example, if you use Chatwing as your chat room for your live page, you could get the Chatwing app for Android or iOS and run that so you can see the chat room and it's optimized for mobile devices. You can chat with your live audience while you're live streaming then. There are several other mobile-friendly embeddable chat rooms like Check Tango, ChatWe, and many others out there where you could run them either as a standalone app or maybe have a page set up that is just the chat room and you go to that page in the browser on your tablet. But this allows you to see very easily what's going on in the live stream and potentially doing it without having to take up extra space on your computer and deal with extra tabs and switching between windows and all of that complication. If you use a hashtag for your show and you're telling people tweet us with this hashtag during the show, then I recommend that you just open a browser on your tablet and go to either tweetchat.com or tchat.io. That's T-C-H-A-T dot I-O. Either of these are Twitter web apps designed to help you engage around a certain hashtag. They'll have live refreshing. It'll make it look like a chat room, but it's doing it around a particular hashtag. So if you type a message, it automatically adds that hashtag to your tweet. And that can be a great way for you to, in real time, 
monitor the conversation that's going on around a particular hashtag while you're live streaming with your podcast. That's number eight, live engagement. Number nine, editing. Yeah, you can edit your podcast on your tablet. I do recommend that you use a tablet for this because a mobile device like a smartphone, even though they're getting bigger and bigger, are still kind of small and very difficult to edit the details of audio or video on that device because you really have to zoom in and have really good precision with your finger if you're trying to edit out certain words or portions in your audio or video. If you have a Microsoft Surface tablet, then it's very easy to use Audition, Audacity, really any desktop audio editor you could use on the Microsoft Surface tablet because Microsoft Surface is usually running Windows, especially with Windows 10. It's really going to bring together that ecosystem of allowing the same app to run on multiple devices. If you're working with a different kind of mobile platform or you want to handle a recording in a more simplistic way, you could use Road Rec app to handle your recording and editing, as well as some of the other recording apps I mentioned, like Opinion is one that you could use. On the iPad side, Multitrack DAW, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation, Multitrack DAW is a great app on the iPad for multi-track editing. It looks nice. It works really well and allows you to have multiple tracks, to have your soundtrack, your vocal tracks. It's not a recording app so much. It's really an editing app. And there are other apps. And I'd love to hear your suggestions, especially on the Android side for good multi-track or single track editing apps. Also, GarageBand iMovie, Movie Maker, some of these built-in audio and video editing apps can work great for this kind of thing because they are often designed for touch and will work well for you to be able to edit your podcast together in a simplistic way generally. You won't have full control. You won't probably won't be able to do stuff like loudness normalization or advanced compression. Some of these apps do include effects that you can use. But in general, your editing on an iPad is going to be simpler in what you can do than what you could do on a desktop side. But that gap is shrinking over time as tablets get even more and more powerful. That's number nine, editing. Number 10, remote control. You could use your tablet as a controller for something else that you're doing on your computer. I mentioned that the most popular way that people use their tablets is for playing sound effects into their recordings. But you could also use your tablet as the remote control for your computer that plays the sound effects. For example, both Soundbite and Soundboard have apps for iPad and iOS that allow you to remotely control the app that's on your computer but from your iOS device. So I could be sitting at the other side of the room with no cables whatsoever connected to my mobile device. I can press a button and then my computer plays that sound clip into the recording. Right now, there are certain issues with latest versions of software, but those will be fixed at some point. Like Soundboard for iOS currently does not work with OS X Yosemite, but that will be fixed. And some of these other apps, as long as they're regularly updated, I would anticipate them to be fixed as well. But that can be a great way that you can do this from your iPad and not have to have the screen visible on your computer for that particular program. But you can still control it from this additional screen that you have on your iPad. You could do something very similar to this by if you integrate your mobile device and iPad or Android tablet as an additional monitor for your computer. This is a bit more complicated to set up, but it does give you that potential of having an extra monitor that maybe that extra monitor is a way that you control a specific app for your computer. For iPad, there's a great app called Actions for iPad, and it allows you to create your own customized shortcuts on your own little button layout, color-coded, named however you want, for whatever program you want on either Windows or OS X. This is great for if there are those certain 
repeated tasks that you need to do on a particular program. And you don't, you don't want to dig through the menus and you don't want to try and remember a keyboard shortcut for it. You could use your iPad as your shortcut device. So your iPad, for example, might have a copy button. You just press that and you have copied your text or your portion of whatever you have selected of audio or video, and it's copied it. And then you have another button you press and that's for paste. Yes, keyboard shortcuts are pretty familiar with us for copy and paste, but there could be more advanced operations that you do, like select everything before the cursor and shift it forward, or it could execute a particular filter for you with a particular setting that is saved in the favorites for your program. This is really powerful when you think beyond the simple things like cut, copy, and paste and go into those more advanced things. And you use your iPad then as a remote controller for a specific program. The Actions app is great for this. You could also use your tablet as a controller for your entire computer. You can do this through VNC programs that are available for free or premium. You could also do this through a specific platform like Splashtop, which works on your computer to stream the information out to whatever device you want to use to connect to it. And you could use Splashtop in one of its many different flavors, either to control just the mouse cursor of your computer. Maybe you want to use your tablet as a keyboard to your computer. Maybe you want to use your tablet to control everything about your computer. So you see your computer screen on your tablet and you're interacting with your computer, which might be somewhere else or might just be out of reach through your tablet as you're touching and using the keyboard then on your tablet. This can be great for live streaming where maybe your live streaming computer is too far away from you and you'd have to get up to adjust to something. This could also work for if you use certain mobile cameras or maybe a device that connects to a camera to be able to remotely control that camera. Like there are different things out there for DSLRs or some of the cameras have Wi-Fi built in and you can control what that camera is seeing, exposure settings, it's recording. You can monitor some of these things and adjust certain settings from your tablet or even from a smaller mobile device. So this is number 10, remote control. Number 11, silent research. This is something that annoys me often when I hear someone doing a podcast and while they're talking their co-host is going with their keyboard, typing something in the chat room. They're doing some kind of research, whatever the case is. It's making this typing noise into the recording. It can get distracting at times. I like how the MacBooks have a very silent keyboard, but it's not the most silent. And I've heard people like Jim Collison from the Average Guy TV podcast and network has talked about how the Apple keyboard is the most quiet keyboard that he's seen. And you can use the Apple keyboard on a Windows computer as well. But it is nice and quiet, but it is still mechanical. So plastic and metal are moving, springs are engaging and disengaging. It is still going to make noise. Your tablet then could be your way of quietly searching for things. Like if I hold my tablet, up to my microphone and tap it. You can just barely hear it. And that's my holding it right up to the microphone. If I have that down on a surface in front of me, away from the microphone, by even just a foot or two feet away from the microphone, and I'm typing out on that, tapping on the touch screen, you probably wouldn't hear it at all in the microphone or in the recording, and certainly not to a distracting level. Specifically, apps that I recommend if you want to try to do this kind of thing, like you're live streaming a show and you or your co-host need to suddenly research something while the other person is talking, have your browser ready to Google something or have Wikipedia ready so that all you have to do is type in your search term into Wikipedia or maybe there's a specific niche Wikipedia version for you that you search that if you need some quick facts in your podcast. So that way, if 
your co-host is talking and you need to find some information, people don't hear this. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, I know for certain that the way and the answer to this is this thing. It starts to get distracting. If you can do it silently, then it will sound awesome with your podcast. That's number 11, silent research or silent engagement. And number 12, this one's probably out of our reach mostly. I am considering trying, seeing if I can try something that might be financially within our reach to do this, but it is mixing from your iPad. There are mixers out there by Behringer, by Mackie, and by several other audio mixer companies that will have the bare bones in the actual mixer itself. And that mixer runs almost like a computer, even to the point that it has fans on it and a CPU in it and software updates and such. But you control that mixer from a tablet, an Android or an iPad. This could be awesome, especially for doing live streaming video where you can't be next to the mixer, but you can have a tablet with you. So from your seat, you could adjust the volume on that mixer. For a particular channel, you can adjust some of the other settings. You could handle some of the software mix minus features in it to simplify that. It is really cool, but it's also expensive. I looked at a Mackie mixer that does this, and it was $2,000 for this. Behringer just came out with some new mixers that do this kind of thing too in their Air series of mixers. That's A I R. And these are still pretty expensive near the thousand dollar range depending on how many channels you need and some of the other functionality that you need with this but it could be an awesome way to work with your audio to control your mixer from your tablet so these are 12 ways that you can use a tablet for podcasting and with podcasting number one use it as a soundboard. Number two, use it for recording. Number three, use it for curating content. Number four, use it for preparing notes. Number five, use it when presenting in your podcast. Number six, use it for guest or co-host call-in. Number seven, use it for live streaming. Number eight, use it for live engagement. Number nine, use it for editing. Number 10, use it for remote control. Number 11, use it for silent research while you're recording. And number 12, if you can afford it, use it for expensive mixing with an expensive mixer. I'd love your feedback on these points, other apps and accessories that you recommend to make these different tasks easier, as well as if you think there's another way that you could use a tablet with podcasting, I'd love to hear the information about that. Please comment on the show notes for episode 210 at theaudacitypodcast.com slash tablet for podcasting. I have one announcement for you, and that is that SEO for podcasters is available and it is an exhaustive course on search engine optimization. You may be thinking the SEO is just this technical thing just for internet marketers. No, it's not. SEO is a very important way that you can grow your podcast. And it's not just about growing your audience, but the approach that I take in this eight-hour course and split up into several different sessions to make it easier to digest is I take the approach that SEO is about optimizing your content for humans who use search engines. So the approach that I show you with search engine optimization isn't just technical. It's also a little bit philosophical in that it helps you change how you're approaching your content and how you're presenting your content. I can't guarantee that you'll double or triple or increase your audience by large numbers if you get SEO for podcasters. But what I am certain of is that it will change the way that you podcast for the better. Check it out over at theaudacitypodcast.com slash SEO, and that's SEO or search engine optimization for podcasters. I'd love to help you with your podcasting. If you need help, then please email feedback at theaudacitypodcast.com. We could set up some one-on-one consulting, or I can set things up for you, fix a problem that you might be having or answer some questions through the podcast, send me that information. Feedback at theaudacitypodcast.com or the contact information is also on the website at theaudacitypodcast.com. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode, so please comment on the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash tablet for podcasting. 
The podcast awards are still in processing, but if you'd like to show your support for us, please go to the audacity to podcast.com slash podcast awards. Sign up there for that email list. And once the voting starts, we'll let you know what podcasts we have in the finalist positions and how you can support our podcast and other podcasts that I will recommend voting for over there. The audacity to podcast.com slash podcast awards. Now that I've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to go launch or improve your own podcast for sharing your passions and finding success. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, the ramen noodle on Twitter, and from the audacity to podcast.com. Thank you for listening. The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our 